All right, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Structure Free Learning. In this video, we're going to do an introductory example on the moment distribution method. All right, so let's get to this. We've got a fixed support at A, or roller support at B, fixed support at C, distributed load of one kip per foot in span A, B, concentrated load 20 kips, span B, C, two different moments of inertia on these segments, two different lengths. And what I want to do ultimately is calculate reactions and draw the shear and moment diagrams. But in order for me to calculate the reactions, because this whole thing is statically indeterminate, I'm going to use some technique. You could apply the slope deflection equations here to solve this. I'm going to do this one using the moment distribution method just to illustrate how it's done. So if you've watched my previous video on how to how or I described the process of the moment distribution method, you know I like to call it the lock and pop approach. Really the idea is that you lock all the joints, calculate fixed end moments, then you balance and you distribute. And then you carry over and then you repeat that process of balancing, distributing, and carrying over, balancing, distributing, carrying over until the carryover moments become negligible. The way I'm going to do it for this problem or the way I like to work these problems out is to figure out all these other things first, you know, things associated with distribution factors, carryover factors, stiffnesses, so that I don't have to go through and calculate those later on. So here's the way that I'm going to approach this problem. First thing I'm going to do is calculate member stiffnesses. Then I'm going going to calculate distribution factors and carry over factors. The most important part of all this is probably setting up this table. All right, so I'm going to set up a table and then we're going to bust or calculate the fixed end moments and we'll talk and then we'll go through this process of balancing, distributing and carrying over until the carryover moments become negligible enough. Then after all of this, after I've gotten the moments and uh, after I sum six is sum columns, and you'll see what I mean by this, I will be able to finally calc reactions and then draw shear moment diagrams. So the first thing I'm going to do is calculate member stiffnesses. And I only have two members here. And since I only have one free joint, if you will, or one place where my one place in my structure where my where my joint can rotate, I'm I'm always looking the, at the stiffness from, if you will, from a moment applied at point B and the rotation moment rotation relationship for that free joint. So when I look at the stiffness for member AB, this is going to be 4 EI over L. Assuming the modulus of elasticity is the same for this whole structure, this is going to be 4 E times 750 inches to the fourth divided by 25 feet times 12 inches per foot, which comes out to 10 times the modulus of elasticity inches cubed. And KBC, similarly, because again the far end is fixed. Is 25 times the modulus of elasticity inches cubed. All right, so now that I have the member stiffnesses, the next thing I really need to do is calculate the distribution factors and carryover factors so I can implement the moment distribution method. But before I do that, let's, you know, I like to draw my structure in, in, in a blown up way, if you will, which I mean, when I say blown up, I mean like I cut it right before each of those joints here and draw it with the internal moments that I want to solve for being shown. And with the thing I need to remember is the internal sign convention when I apply the moment distribution method for internal Internal moments at the ends. Any moment is positive going clockwise. So here, this would be one end. Here is another end. These internal moments are considered positive. And so at the ends of these members, I want to draw, when I start out, I want to draw all my moments as internally positive. So here, this would be, I would call this MBA, MAB. I use this notation because here, this MAB is like the moment in member AB closest to joint A. MBA is a moment in member at a B closest to joint B same here going again clockwise this would be M B C and M C B these one two three four moments are the things I am trying to solve for so let's go ahead and get these distribution factors and carryover factors. So the distribution factor depends on the stiffness of the members framing into the joint and we can determine this going joint by joint. So here if I look at joint A, the distribution factor from joint A into member AB is equal to the stiffness of member AB divided by the total stiffness of joint A. This is equal to zero because the total stiffness at joint A is infinite. We have a 
fixed support at point A. It does not rotate. There is no distribution that's going on from joint A. Same thing with joint C. The distribution factor from joint B into member AB is equal to the stiffness of member AB divided by the total stiffness of joint B. And then same with the distribution factor from joint B into member BC. This would be K. BC over the total stiffness of joint B. So the total stiffness of joint B is equal to, or really the total stiffness of any joint is equal to the stiffnesses of all the members framing into that joint. So here in this case, the stiffness of joint B is the sum of the stiffness of member AB plus member BC, which in this case would be, if we look over here, what 10E and 25E. So this would be 10E plus 25e, which is 35e inches cubed. And if I go ahead now and I substitute here, I recall for member a, a b the stiffness is 10e divided by 35e, which is 0.286. And here, this is 25e divided by 35e, which is 0.714. And notice the distribution factors at one joint sum up to one. Now that we have the distribution factors, the thing we have to determine are the carryover factors. And the carryover factors are the factors that tell us how much of the distributed moment we need to carry over to the other side of the member. So there's going to be a moment that we distribute here and we're going to need to carry a portion of that to the other side of the member. And then same here, we're going to carry that to the other side of the member. From the joint that we're looking at, the far end is fixed. The carryover factor is 1 half. And in both cases here, because the far ends are fixed, each of these carryover factors are 1 half. All right, so now the next thing that we want to do is set up the table to help aid us in our calculations. I want to have is the same number of columns as I have end moments I need to solve for. So I have here one, two, three, four end moments I need to solve for. I need four columns, and I'm going to add in another column for labeling. And each of this, I'm going to call this member, but really it's like moment, if you will. Here, this is going to be moment A, B, B, A, B, C and C, B. A lot of times the first row is associated with, you know, it's a joint associated with each of the members. And here this is A, B, and C. The next line is the distribution factors. So D, F, A, B, and D, F, C, B were zero because the joints were fixed. D, F, B, A was 0.286 and 0.71. One, four. Now we're ready to determine the fixed end moments and run essentially the iterations associated with the moment distribution method or locking and unlocking or what I like to call pop and lock or lock and pop really. So the thing that we need to determine are the fixed end moments of each member. This is the case where everything, or we pretend, we visualize the structure as every joint being locked, and we calculate the moments associated as if everything were locked, or as if all the joints were fixed. And what that means is, the model, or the fixed end moment model for member AB would be a a fixed fixed beam with a uniformly distributed load on top of it. So it's something like this. And you can find these fixed fixed beam drawings in any structural analysis book textbook. This is the model for member A B with the distributed load. And here it just tells you that the end moments are WL have a magnitude of WL squared over twelve. So for us what this means is that the moment A B over here, this M A B for the fixed end moment A B is equal to minus one kit per foot times the length of, I believe it was 25 feet squared, divided by 12, which is negative 52.083 kip feet. The negative, because here, if you look, we had drawn MAB as clockwise, and the actual fixed end moment here is counterclockwise. And that's why there is this negative here, because this moment is counterclockwise. Fixed end moment BA, on the other hand, is positive because this is also clockwise and it's the same numbers one get positive 52.083 kip feet and so what we would do is take these moments that we calculated and throw them up over here no 
yes. And so now we can repeat the same process for member BC because it has a concentrated load. So we're going to find the fixed end moment diagram, if you will, for a, a concentrated load at the mid span of a fixed fixed beam. And each of these are PL over 8, which means that the fixed end moment, this should have been a BA, fixed end moment BC is equal to negative 20 kips times 16 feet divided by 8, negative 40 kip feet. And FEM CB is just positive 40 kip feet. So I would put in here negative 40 plus 40. Yes. Okay, so now, oh wait, you know what? I drew this line a little prematurely here. That line should not be there. And now I have these fixed end moments. This is my quote unquote lock condition. And now what we want to do is pop the joint, balance each joint with an additional moment that we have. And whatever that balanced moment is, we want to distribute it. Popping or unlocking really just means you're calculating the balancing moment and then you're distributing to each of the members. So here, usually what's done is the, the, there's another line added right here. And then you add distribute and this would be what we call the pop. And so I would look at each joint here. If I want to provide equilibrium at joint A, I need a balancing moment of positive 52.083. And then that balancing moment I would distribute which means I would take that 52.083 and multiply it by zero, which makes this zero. So now when I look at joint B, here's what's going on. At joint B, I have, from my fixed end moments, I have an equal and opposite moment that's going like this, a 52.083. And then from the other side, I have a 40 kip foot moment going this way. And I need to make sure that this joint B is in equilibrium. And the way I do that, I have to introduce a balancing moment. And this M bow, this balancing moment, has to, to provide equilibrium here. So that means I need an M bow. If I, let's see, I have 52.083 going this way, if you will, and then 40 going clockwise. So I'm going to need a, a moment that's in the same direction as this 40 kip foot uh, of 12.08 three kip fit to provide equilibrium, which really is the same as in this joint sign convention, I need to introduce a balancing moment of negative 12.083. Now this balancing moment, I've got to distribute to the members to each side. So here I got to take some of this, put it to the member AB, take some of it, give it to member BC. And I'm going to use the distribution factors for that. So this 12.083 times 0.286 which is equal to negative 3.456 is what I'm distributing into member AB. In member BC, I am distributing negative 8.627. And you can tell, you know, obviously these two should add up to negative 12.083. I would go back over here and the distributed, the distributed moments would be negative 3.456 and negative 8.627. Yes, and then the same goes for here. This, you know, at NC, I have, again, a distribution factor of zero. I need a negative 40 to balance out this joint. Multiply it by zero, zero. Done. Next, now the thing I got to do is carry over. So I don't carry over within a joint, but I do carry over from member BA to a, the other side of member AB. So I carry over here to here. This is just like what we were talking about before, taking something, some moment, the balancing moment that's distributed here and carrying it over to this side. The balancing moment that's distributed here and carrying it over to the other side. This negative 3.456, we're going to call this the carryover. And this is equal to negative 3.456 divided by 2 because we're only carrying over half. So this is negative 1.728. I have 0 here, 0 here, and then I have negative 4.314. I notice that my joint B, this is my lock condition again. And do I have any need to pop and balance and redistribute? I don't. 
because my joint B here is a zero and zero it has now zero moments, right? So it's already in equilibrium. And so I'm done. And now to finish this off, and this, I'm just gonna add up right here. I'm gonna sum up all the columns here. And this summation is gonna give me negative 52.083 plus zero minus 1.728. This gives me negative 53.811, 52.083, minus 3.456, that gives me 48.627. If I did everything right, this column should add up to this column. So this is negative 48.627, or I'm sorry, equal and opposite to make sure I have joint equilibrium. And this should, be, and this, if I add up, this column is positive 35.686. And these are my moments, MAB, MBA, MBC, MCB. And some people might argue you're done here, but here we, you know, we say we're going to draw the shear moment diagram. So what does, what do these things mean? So what this means is, if I go down here, so in summary, oh, before I do that, you know, what you would have, what we would have had to do is if we had values that got carried over here, these were non-zero right here so remember ba this purple zero was non-zero and bc right here this was non-zero then i'd have to go through this process of of balance of figuring out a balancing moment and then distributing it again and then carrying over again until my carryover is so small the result is negligible m a b is equal to negative 53.811 kip feet and what that means is this is 53.811 counterclockwise and then if I go through here M B A this was I got a positive result which means this is 48.627 kip feet clockwise and the same thing here I can go with it oh don't forget the units ah, don't judge me again here M B C is equal to you know this is it was a negative 48.627 which makes this 48.627 kip feet counterclockwise and MCB was 35.686 kip feet a positive which makes this 35.686 clockwise all right